In today's video lesson, we're going to learn about the mass relationships in chemical reactions, where we can find out how many grams of one substance would react with another mass of a substance to get the product that we want. We call these relationships in chemistry stoichiometry. First, let's figure out what chemical reactions are actually telling us. So in this reaction, we have magnesium plus oxygen to make magnesium oxide. And we have to do a quick look. Is this reaction balanced? And it's not. So we have one magnesium here, one here. We have two oxygens here, but only one over here. So we're gonna have to put a two in here because we now have two magnesium, we'll need to put a two here. So when we look back to our first unit, if you remember, then numbers in front of molecules tell you how many molecules of those atoms. So this means that two molecules of, of Mg are reacting with one molecule of oxygen gas to make two molecules of MgO. We can take that a step further now that we know about the mole. We can also say two moles of Mg plus one mole of O2 makes two moles of MgO. So the molecules and the moles are the same ratio or relationship, but mass is different and that's what we need to figure out. Now we're going to look at the challenges of working with masses of elements. Um, we can't just say that we have 20 grams of magnesium reacting with 10 grams of oxygen to make whatever the mass of magnesium oxide is because the molar masses of each element is different. So the number of moles will be different depending on the different types of masses we have. So what we need to do is bring in our mole triangle, our relationship, to remind us how these things go together. So if I have a mass of magnesium that I'm given, so this is our mass, I can always find the molar mass. I can use those two values to find the number of moles. So if I know I have a certain mass, I can calculate the number of moles is equal to the mass of it over the molar mass. And that's what we're going to practice with in our next slide. So here's our example. So on spacecraft, the buildup of carbon dioxide is an issue and has to be removed. So if you think about it, when we breathe air in, we're extracting oxygen from the air and then we're releasing the carbon dioxide that we've produced during cellular respiration back out into the air. And if that carbon dioxide isn't dealt with, it's gonna build up to toxic levels. So what scientists do on spaceships is they use a compound called lithium hydroxide, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air and makes lithium carbonate and water. So in our question here, if each person made a thousand grams of carbon dioxide per day, how much lithium hydroxide would be needed to process that carbon dioxide? So let's take a look at this reaction. So we have CO2 plus LiOH makes Li2CO3 plus H2O. So if we look at this reaction, our carbons are balanced, our oxygens, we have two here, one here, we have three plus one is four here. We also have only one lithium here and we have two over here. So what we're going to do is balance that. So we're gonna put a two here and then check and see if everything else balances. So 
that now makes two lithium, that makes two plus two oxygen, so four, and our number of hydrogens we didn't count before, so we have two here and two here. So our reaction is now balanced. So the first thing we need to do is find the molar mass of each of our compounds. So the molar mass of lithium hydroxide would be equal to the molar mass of each of the elements, so 6.94 plus 16.00 plus 1.01. .01. So that's going to be equal to, we'll add these values together, so 6.94 plus 16.00 plus 1.01. .01. That's 23.95 grams per mole. So we're going to use this value shortly to figure out our relationships. Now, the next one, we need to find the molar mass of carbon dioxide because we need to find out, you know, how many moles of that we have so that we can figure out how many moles of lithium hydroxide we need. So that's going to be equal to 12.01 plus 2 times 16.00. So we'll calculate that. It's 32 for the 16 plus 12.01. That equals 44.01 grams per mole. Now we're ready to add some values into our table on the next slide. So this table sh shows us how to solve for the mass relationships. So what I do is, if you can see, the columns are the reactants in the products. We have our carbon dioxide and our lithium hydroxide reacting with to form water and lithium carbonate. And then down the side, we have our mass, our molar mass, our moles, and our mole ratio. So in these tables, you divide down and you multiply up. So the way that would work is you would take your mass, you would divide by your molar mass, that would give you your number of moles, and then you divide by the coefficient of the ratio to give you the mole relationship. And then you would take it over, and then you'd multiply by the coefficient here. That will give you your number of moles. Then you'll multiply by the molar mass to give you your mass. So let's solve this equation. So we remember that we had 1,000 grams of carbon dioxide. And the molar mass of carbon dioxide, if you remember, was 44.01 grams per mole. So we can now divide 1,000 grams divided by 44.01. And that gives us 22.72 moles. Now we divide by the coefficient, so we divide by 1, so that's still 22.72. But we want to know how many moles of lithium hydroxide. So we take that value over, we multiply by 2, because now we're multiplying up. So timesing that by 2, we get 45.44 moles of lithium hydroxide. Now let's remind ourselves of the molar mass. So the molar mass of lithium hydroxide was 23.95 grams per mole. So we're going to multiply that by the number of moles. And we get a value of 1,088.4 grams of lithium hydroxide. So in the spaceship... For every 1,000 grams of carbon dioxide each person makes per day, you need 1,088.4 grams of lithium hydroxide. So pretty much just over a kilogram of lithium hydroxide a day. Now, if we wanted to, we could continue and calculate how much water was produced and then how much lithium carbonate was produced using the same method. But we're just going to leave it at this for now. In our next example, we learn that N2H4 and N2O4 react to form water and nitrogen gas. If 15 grams of N2H4 reacts with enough N2O4 for all of it to react, how much nitrogen gas would be made? 
So the first thing we need is our chemical equation. So we have N2H4 plus N2O4, and that makes H2O plus N2. So the first thing we need to do is balance or make sure our equation is balanced. So if we look here, we have four oxygens, but only one here. So I would put a four right in front of H2O, and then that makes us have eight hydrogens. So that's too many there. So we need to put two here. So then we have four nitrogens plus two more. So that's six. So to make there be six over here, we need to put a three. And that's how you balance that equation. So now we'll solve to find out what mass of nitrogen gas will be produced. So again, if you remember, we'll set up our table. This is the, each column is a component of the reaction. So these are our two reactants. These are our two products. Now, you don't really need to write all four columns, but if you were trying to calculate all the values, you would set it up like this. Um, then down the, the different rows, we have our mass, our molar mass, our moles, and our mole ratio. So the first thing we should do is write down the mass of N2H4 that we have. So we have 15.0 grams. And now we need to calc calculate the molar masses of both of these. So first we'll be looking at the molar mass of N2H4. So we write that down. And that's equal to two times the molar mass of nitrogen. So that's 14.01 plus four times the molar mass of hydrogen. And that's 1.01. So that's going to be 28.02 plus 4.04. And that will work out to be 32.06 grams per mole. So now we'll find out the molar mass of nitrogen. So the molar mass of nitrogen gas, kind of already calculated above, that's equal to two times 14.01 grams per mole, so that's equal to 28.02 grams per mole. Now we can write those values into our table. So the molar mass of the first one is 32.06 grams per mole. I don't have room for our units. And then for nitrogen, that's what we're trying to find out. We have 28.02 grams per mole. So now we need to get our calculators ready. So if we take a look at our first one, we need to find the number of moles. So that would be the mass divided by the molar mass. So 15 grams divided by 32.06 grams per mole. So we have 0 0.4679 moles. And now what we need to do is divide by the coefficient that's in front of that molecule. So to do our ratio, so divided by two, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.2339. Didn't fit in our cell, but that's okay. And now we multiply by three, because there's a coefficient three in front of the nitrogen, and our number of moles of N2 are 0 0.7018 moles. We, remember, we try not to round until our very last. And now we'll multiply that by the molar mass, so 28.02, and we get 19.66 grams of nitrogen gas.